Let's move over here. I just got the buzz. Go over here, type in to your URL search bar, ord-oracle.com. Okay, Tim Ord is on every Tuesday and Thursday for the Tom O'Brien Show. We love having him on. Uh, I believe last time uh, that I was on with him, I, I not on Tuesday, but uh, I believe last Thursday, we had a nice uh, bullish sentiment going forward. Of course, we were in the middle of a pullback there, and it looks like we were moving back up. Tim, how are you doing? Good, good. Thanks uh, for having me on again. Happy so, to have you. Uh, uh, well, good. We got... Uh, several charts, so we uh, we can start off with uh, Let's crack into chart it. one if you want. Perfect. I have chart one up right now. All right. This is just uh, kind of a look at the bigger market. Actually, I think we were last week. We were looking for a low, uh, and the market did bounce up. Uh, the bottom window on this chart. This is a yeah. This is a monthly chart. The bottom window is the. Uh, VIX and the middle window is the SPX on a monthly time frame. And what you want to have here is when the S&Ps are making higher highs on a monthly time frame, you want the the um, S, excuse me the bottom window is the SPX VIX ratio on a monthly time frame, and you want that ratio to higher highs as the S&Ps hit higher highs. And I kind of outlined in green there that that's what. That's what needs to happen. That's what's going on. So the bigger trend's up. It doesn't try to pick out every up move. You know, some months you'll be down. But in general, the intermediate term trend's uh, still up. What you don't want to happen, uh, if you go back to late 2021, and you, you'll notice the S&Ps were making higher highs, and that ratio was making lower highs, and you got the decline of 2022. Mm -hmm. And before that, you got back that the COVID crash. It picked out the COVID crash because the SPs were making higher highs. That ratio was making lower highs, and, and then you had the March crash of uh, the COVID crash. But right now, on the monthly time frame, everything's okay. Um, uh, so there, there'll there'll be some down weeks along the way, but uh, we shouldn't have any uh, decline of any any consequence. I'll put it that way. So let's go look at the short term on page two. Yep. You're good to go. Uh, yeah, so now we've got a little bit different story uh, g going on. Bigger trends up. Uh, let me... Yeah, okay, the bigger trends up. The bottom window is the arms index, which is up around 1.14. It's kind of a panic index. It's not really saying a lot. It's the lean's bullish. Uh, next window up is just the VIX. And notice the S&Ps, the top window, is making higher highs, and the SPX VIX ratio is, is making higher lows. And that's a negative divergence on a short-term basis. So uh, and also, if you notice yesterday, it's, the chart's a little bit messy, but if you look at the volume chart, uh, the volume, uh, I got some blue dotted lines from the previous highs on the uh, SPY chart. And the previous highs was a couple of weeks ago, and I got it circled in red. And yesterday, we broke above that previous high, and if you kind of see it there, we did it on the lighter volume. So yes. you got two different versions. You broke a previous high in lighter volume. It looks like about at least 10%, if not 15%, 20% lighter volume. That's usually implies a false breakout to the upside. Yep. To have a valid breakout to the upside, the volume should be at least equal, preferably higher. And here where the volume dropped about 10% or more, that implies a false breakout. And also, with that false breakout, you have a higher VIX. So you got two divergences going on. That's the reason why I said on my market letter yesterday, we're probably not going to hold the highs of a couple of weeks ago. We're probably going to fall back. Nothing real significant. What I think is forming here on the S&Ps starting, uh, looks like about mid-May, it's probably a head and shoulders bottom where last Friday's low, which was the selling climax, that's that big spike in volume there, yep. was the head. And we got some bullish uh, trend readings right around that area suggesting, okay, now we're going to rally from the head. And I didn't know how high we were going to go. We just basically broke above the previous highs, but volume dropped off. So I'm thinking we're going to go back down around that uh, uh, 550 or 525 on the SPY, which is pretty much where the left shoulder bottom is. So I'm thinking this whole pattern that's going to form here is a head and shoulders bottom. 
or is the selling climax is ahead. Uh, you try to get it through the previous high. You did not have a sign of strength. You had actually a kind of a sign of weakness to the previous high. That usually fails. You come back down. Uh, support around 525. I think that's uh, what's going to happen. The VIX kind of confirms that. Then from there, the next rally, I think, is, is going to show some strength. Special to it. strong that volume. Come yeah. next couple of weeks or so. Fantastic. Well, Tim, so. stay right there. We have a commercial break, but we'll be right back. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. We have Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle on. Uh, so, Tim, when we went to the break, we were on chart two. We're actually looking at what was less volume uh, going up, testing those highs. Right. Uh, and actually, uh, yesterday's volume tested a previous high of, uh, I forgot what that was, probably looks like about May of uh, 23rd, somewhere in there. And uh, so it broke a previous high. And now if you look at today's volume, uh, we got you know about a half hour to go here. Uh, this chart's a couple hours old, but I'm looking at the volume today will be not even near yesterday's volume. And today we touched a new high above yesterday's high. So that kind of reinforces the idea we're probably going to get a pullback, you know, I don't know, starting maybe it started already, uh, you know, even though, well, kind of unchanged right now. But to go through a previous high should have a sign of strength. And what's happening here, which is sign of strength, including volume, and you're not having any, we're not having a price surge or a big bump up in volume. Matter of fact, you're having a, a pretty much unchanged day and as uh, far as prices go, and volume's going to be lighter than yesterday. So we're not seeing a sign of strength here. Right. So what's probably going to happen again, is a pullback to that 525 area. Something, okay. Nothing very big, just uh, kind of a sideways consolidation. And I think probably uh, the rally, the big part of the rally will start maybe mid-June, somewhere in there, and that would be worth catching. A lot of times you rally into the July 4th time frame also. That's usually a strong period for the market. So, But between now and then, you might you have to be a little bit of patience here. So um, I'm staying long. uh I'm looking at the bigger time frames. I think the bigger time frames still up, but um, it could be back and forth here for another yeah. couple of week, or another week or two. So we can move on chart three. Let's pull it up. All right, let me refit that. Okay. All right. Uh, this is a weekly. Uh, uh, we we've talked on your show about the monthly. Uh, cumulative up down volume and cumulative advanced decline, and they have to close above the mid Bollinger Band to signal a multi month, if not a multi year rally. That was on a monthly time frame. This is a weekly time frame, so it it gives more false signals. But uh, what I wanted to to talk about uh, is, like I said, does it does it uh, it gives you a little bit of, since it's a weekly chart. And it's more shorter term than the monthly chart. It does kind of sometimes give a whippy chart. Uh, they're you know back in 2023. I got some dotted red lines going in there, and that was a failed signal. I did get above the mid Bollinger Band, but fell back. But what I want to point out is was to the very right is a, a blown up portion of what those indicators look like. And what I want to point out, all of them are above, this is a weekly time frame, all of them are above the mid-Bollinger Band. So what needs to happen here and probably what will happen here is all three of those indicators are probably going to continue, continue to gain strength. It's, it's not a price chart. Price chart may actually even consolidate. But what you need to happen is for those indicators in general to move higher. So they're not going to stay at the current levels. They're going to... Um, probably even accelerate to the upside going forward. What that tells you is the up-down volume or the up volume is increasing compared to the down volume and advancing issues is increasing compared to the uh, the, uh, the declining issues. And that's what happens in bull markets. So volume is going to be going up compared to down volume. Advancing issues are going to be going up compared to uh, the down issues. And so everything on the very right of the chart should be going up, even though GDX may flip into a sideways trading range. Mm -hmm. uh, and that may happen, uh, but there's really no downside here part GDX. Uh, but 
uh, those indicators should keep going higher, and it's something we'll be watching for. Just like if you go back to 2012 high, that very first red line I have drawn on the chart way to the left. Yeah. Uh, that 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 up the the declining issues and the down volume kept pretty much going down, even though sometimes GDX went sideways. So this is the opposite of what should happen here. Uh, so that kind of confirms as we go forward what we'll be looking for. So let's, let's, let's look at chart four. Yep. Um, what I want to say about this is that top window. Okay. I talked to, uh, I think Tom, yeah, we talked to Tom on, on Tuesday. And I said, really, there's no downside on GDX. I think as we're talking on Tuesday, I said, you know, GDX, the reason why uh, this is a monthly GDX on top window there, there's a head and shoulders bottom going on, and I have a blue trend line drawn as uh, as I uh, assume that's the neck, or that is the neckline of a head and shoulders bottom, and it kind of had a sign of strength through the 34 area. So once you break through a trend line with a sign of strength, that, that trend line becomes support. So every time it gets down to 34, range is not exact number, but, you know, probably, I don't know, 33 to 34 and a half is probably the range. That's going to be an area to buy GDX because that's where that trend line lies. And since, you know, you already have a buy on a monthly chart, you know, that's a low-risk buy support area. So I'm, so I'm thinking this is a head and shoulders bottom. Uh, you can see I have a head there, which is basically the October of 2022 low. And uh, the right shoulder is we just came off the right shoulder and the left shoulder. Uh, so, anyhow, this chart dates back to 2021. So that's a three-year chart, and we're just breaking out now. So this is, in my opinion, a very early time in the bull market. So it's, it's, it's still in the infancy stage. This is still the beginning, even though we came quite a ways up from the October low, which is around 20. You know, we're up around 34 now, which is a decent run over a couple of years. The majority of the run is still in front of us, just because the monthly charts, which is the bottom two windows, uh, the bottom window is the up-down volume, the next window higher is a monthly advanced decline. Uh, those Once those turn up, previous times, the shortest time was one and a half years. So what's in front of us is at least one and a half years from right now. Uh, so um, we're very early in the stages. So. Uh, it could it could be extremely rewarding going forward here. So there's a big shift in in the market. I think some of the the cash is com- will be coming out of the market, not probably this year, but probably next year, out of the equity market. And it's probably going to go into the gold market. Right. So I uh, see we have another commercial coming up here. Yeah, and I just want to say, so when when we're getting that sustained motion above the mid bollinger band this is really what you want to see for something bullish right on the on the you know above that bollinger band yeah you should not fall below it you know from here on out in general you're going to keep going higher and higher on both those those two indicators right on well tim stay right there we'll be back after the commercial break Welcome back, everyone. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. We are joined by Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Uh, Tim, before the break, we were looking at the GDX. I was mentioning how you want to see that sustained close above the mid Bollinger Band in the monthly advanced decline and the uh, other monthly as well. And I wanted to see if you had anything else on this chart you wanted to say. Uh, actually, you could go to chart five. Yeah. It's, it's kind of... It's less noisy. You know, sometimes I get these charts so messy you can't see the forest through the trees. But um, anyhow, the top window, I have things labeled there a little bit better. You can see the head, the, the top window is a monthly GDX. And you can see I have the, the neckline drawn there, support around 34. And the, the head was October of 2023, I guess it was, 20. There were 22, and the right shoulder formed over the last, you know, year and a half or whatever. And we finally got through that neckline. And at the same time, the uh, monthly cumulative up-down volume advanced line indicator broke through their mid-Bollinger band. So you have a lot of uh, type of different uh, technical analysis tools that kind of confirms this is really a breakout 
of the head and shoulders pattern through that neckline. So the chance of failure is, is always possible, but it's unlikely. Uh, but anyhow, this head and shoulders uh, bottom has an upside target around 55. So that doesn't mean that's where the high is going to be. That's the minimum upside target projection for this head and shoulders bottom. You know, it, it could get back to, I don't know where it could go, but that would be the minimum. And that's pretty close where the 2012 high was. So there's probably a lot of stocks that are going to go 10 for 1 here. Uh, in other words, if it's a dollar, it may go uh, right. to 10 bucks for this this rally runs out. Depends how long the rally lasts. You know, but a year and a half is, is normal. You know, three to four is possible. So we'll see. I think this is going to be a longer lasting uh, rally. The reason why the last two or last, last three advances or the rallies and declines, you know, the bull markets and the bear markets for GDX, all of them kind of lasted one and a half years. So I'm thinking this one's going to last three, four years. So. It's kind of a rule of alternation, but we'll see how it works out. Sure. But once these indicators turn back down, is when the which is I think a long ways away. It'll be when to get out of the gold stock. So, but right now we don't have to worry about that. We just we're in the early stages of the bull market, and it could last a while. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Let's go to the last chart. Pulling it Get over right six. now. Yep, we got it up. Right. This is kind of the formations I like to see. This is not necessarily a, uh, this is uh, Corlina or uh, can't quite read it. But anyhow, I really you. don't look at names of stocks. I look at how the formation is forming. Right. And this is a monthly chart. So this is an ideal way to look at gold stocks going forward here. You, you really want to pick the ones that the Bollinger Bands are squeezing on. So this is an example of a, a potential one that, that may go 10 to 1 or even better. Um, but you want them above the mid-Bollinger Band on the monthly time frames. You want the Bollinger Bands to squeeze together. So that, if you notice this stock, going back to uh, late 2022, really hadn't gone anywhere. It pretty much went sideways. And that's what normally happens in base building. The longer the base, usually the longer the rally occurs. So this thing's been base building, you know, close to two years now. And the Bollinger Bands are, are squeezing together. And if you notice, the volume is really picked up here. i got a square yeah. around the volume. Compared to previous years, this volume on the buy side, which is green, uh, if it's red, it's on the sell side, uh, is all picked up to the upside. And so you're, you're actually seeing a sign of strength going through the mid-Bollinger Band. So how high is high this stock? I don't know, but I wouldn't be surprised to get back to the old highs up around two bucks. So is it ten for one? Not quite, but you know it's it's one that has prospects that uh, could be really a, a big winner. And the volatility she should be uh, become more straight line since it's really base building here. It's due for an impulse wave. Yeah, an impulse wave is is more. You know, more up than down. It'll, it'll kind of just persistently be up from month to month. So, and it's still in a buy range. You know, the mid Bollinger Band was probably a little bit below uh, twenty cents. We're at twenty three right now when I put when I did this. So it's still fairly early in the stages. And if you notice, the mid Bollinger Band is actually have turned up. And that's uh, so momentum on this chart is turned up. Yes. So it's it's a uh, you know, I thought I'd just show that if you can find other charts that look similar, which there are, there's a lot of them out there that look similar to this one. I just, this is the one I kind of, I focus in on, on the monthly time frame first, make sure the monthly time frames is turned up, then I go back down to the weekly and dailies from there. But uh, well, you this can even one see has the promise, pinching. I'll put it that way, no guarantees. No, but, for sure. Uh, but I, I bet in six months from now, this. This will be a lot higher than it is what it is right now. So, and plus, you got the market going with this stock. This is a gold stock, and the gold market has turned from, you know, bull to more extreme bull. Yeah. So, um, and I mean, you can even so see the similar setup favoring. from 2019 as well on this. So, I'm, I'm going to zoom in a little bit on this chart because it's kind of small. But even in the beginning, for everyone watching back there, 
you know, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I mean, you see this pinch set up as well, you know, in 2019, then we cross above that Bollinger Band and then it really just takes off in a major yeah. way. Uh, I'm curious, yeah. Tim, because I'm not familiar with this, but the, the, the bottom window, that slow STO, can you give me a little bit of insight of in what that is? That's a slow uh, stochastics. Okay. It's kind of a momentum okay. indicator. The next one is MACD, but it's a slow stochastics. Uh, um, usually I, I got away from a lot of those type indicators is because uh, the Bollinger Bands uh, work better than, than anything else I ever found because it gives you a lot of clues. If you notice on that, if you look to the left, that 2019 period, I have some uh, circles on on that chart. And the reason why I circled those, if you get yeah. 50% above the monthly Bollinger Band, a lot of times you get consolidations. And yes. um, so that's the reason why I was kind of saw, circling those. Those are kind of like on a monthly time. In other words, the market's gone too fast, too quick in a direction. If you get 50% of the open and close on a monthly time frames above the upper Bollinger Band, a lot of times you get a pullback. And I if see. you notice... Back in July of 2020, 100% of that move on the open and close was above the Bollinger Band. And that marked the top. And that's pretty common on a lot of different issues uh, over the years. So always kind of watch. If you punch above the upper Bollinger Band, a lot of times, um, especially if you get 50% of the, of the trading range above the upper Bollinger Band, you're going to have some pullback. So it's, that's the reason why I circled that to kind of remind myself that, uh, anyhow, this, this stock is, is prime. It's got volume. It's got momentum and everything I, I really want in a stock. This particular stock has it, even though it's only 23 cents. Uh, has a lot of promise. Love it. I have so many more questions, but we'll have to wait for the next one. Tim, thank you so much for joining us as always. Folks, if you want to check out Tim's stuff, which I really recommend you do, you go ahead and head over to the org, hyphen oracle.com. Uh, Come on. He's great. Tim, thank you so much for joining us. Right. Take care, Talk Tim. Talk to you on Folks. Tuesday. Thanks a lot. See you Tuesday, Tim. Folks, we'll be right back after a short break.